Welcome to No Longer Conformed, my online preaching and teaching ministry. We're studying the book of Matthew, the first gospel. In this session, we'll be looking at Matthew chapter 16, verses 1 through 12. Wisdom is better than bread. Wisdom is something we all should have, especially Christians who have the source of all spiritual wisdom dwelling within them the Holy Spirit. But spiritual wisdom does not just happen, it is gained. Just uh, our passage, Matthew 16, verses 1 through 12, reveals the issue of wisdom in an interesting way. There are three truths for us to learn about wisdom as we observe the Lord's encounter with some religious leaders and his own disciples. First, human understanding does not produce spiritual wisdom. Look at verses 1 through 4. Then the Pharisees and Sadducees came and testing him asked that he would show them a sign from heaven. He answered and said to them, When it is evening, you say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and threatening. Hypocrites, you know how to discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of the times. A wicked and adulterous generation seek after signs, and no sign shall be given it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. And he left them and departed. Jesus rebuked them for being so concerned with heavenly signs that they could not interpret the sign of the times. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 22 down to verse 24. For Jews request a sign, and Jews and Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified to the Jews a stumbling block, and to the Greeks foolishness. But to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. They asked for a sign from heaven before they would believe Jesus' message. He pointed them to the sign of Jonah. What is the sign of Jonah? Well, Matthew chapter 12, verse 39. But he answered and said to them, an evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign and no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Luke chapter 24, verses 46 to 48. Then he said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. Those who are so wise to the ways of this world and who use its systems for their own personal gain can be so ignorant of spiritual truth. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 20 and 21. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God. It pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. He was in their midst and they refused to acknowledge him. They had the long promised, long awaited Messiah. This is those who hear the gospel and reject it. Human understanding does not produce spiritual wisdom and second spiritual truth without application is of no value verse 5 now when his disciples had come to the other side they had forgotten to take bread then jesus said to them take heed and beware of the leaven of the pharisees and the sadducees and they reasoned among themselves saying it is because we have taken no bread so much exposure to jesus and yet still ignorant there are many who spend much of their life in church 
They grow up in Sunday school. They're exposed to all the teachings of the church and yet remain ignorant of spiritual truth. Why? Shallow spiritual thinking. Jesus warned them of the dangerous influence of the religious leaders. And the disciples thought he was talking about actual bread. Reality check. God provided plenty of bread. Spiritual food. They did not need what the Pharisees and the Sadducees were offering them. They forgot the miracles so quickly. And that still affects the ministry of the church today. Those exposed to much spiritual truth can remain spiritually unwise for lack of application of what they learn. Spiritual truth without application is of no value. And then third, instruction by Jesus applied brings spiritual wisdom. Look at verse 8. <clears throat> but Jesus, being aware of it, said to them, Oh, you of little faith, why do you reason among yourselves because we have brought no food, no bread? Do you not yet understand or remember the five loaves of the 5,000 and how many baskets you took up? Nor the seven loaves of the 4,000 and how many baskets you took up? How is it you do not understand that I did not speak of you concerning bread, but to beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, then they understood that he did not tell them to beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and Sadducees. The doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Here Jesus referred to the issue as doctrine. In Luke chapter 12 and verse 1, he addressed it as hypocrisy. In the meantime, when an innumerable number, innumerable multitude of people had gathered together so that they trampled one another, he began to say to his disciples, first of all, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. These two characteristics are inseparable. Religious people can become so legalistic that they cannot help but become hypocrites. It's inevitable. Matthew 23, verse 25. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you cleanse the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they're full of extortion and self-indulgence. A focus on external things, the way they appear, not what they are, rather than the internal matters of the heart. Jesus explained the situation to his disciples, and then they came to an understanding of what he was teaching them. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. But Jesus wants us to experience the spiritual reality that when we are certain of the truth, we will not be fooled confused or alarmed by counterfeit reproductions. Those instructed by Jesus Christ can gain spiritual wisdom if they apply God's word. Will you commit to gain wisdom by applying the truth of scripture? You give that question some thought and you have a great day.